Now we're talking about human level control with deep reinforcement learning, uh, which is a paper from 2015 that was published by Google DeepMind. Uh, it presents a new reinforcement learning uh, well, framework. So partly the, the algorithm with its use, and then also the this associated network for um, this particular uh, problem. And it was uh, kind of, not, you know, and the new state of the art basically for the problems that was trying to solve. So there's quite a, you know, uh, quite some details to dig into here. Uh, basically, this is a reinforcement learning agent and reinforcement learning agents have achieved some success historically in a variety of domains, uh, but their application has been limited to domains with fully observed low dimensional state spaces. So fully observed, we mean that essentially we can see um, sort of what, what the different states of this um, well, state space is. Uh, it needs to be low dimensional as well. So when you have a large dimensionality that, you know, makes it very hard for the agent to, to learn effectively. Uh, and this paper then, what it does differently is it develops a novel artificial agent called a deep Q network, which is what we're going to refer to in, in the future. Uh, and it can learn successful policy directly from high dimensional sensory inputs using end-to-end -end reinforcement learning. So the key part here is high dimensional sensory inputs firstly. So we said that historically we've only been able to apply this to low dimensional state spaces. Uh, this deep Q network does it also for high dimensional state spaces. And also it uses sensory input uh, with end-to-end -end reinforcement learning. So the sensory inputs here are pixels. What we mean is essentially that we feed it pixels directly without having some sort of pre-processed state representation to make it easier for the neural network. Um, so that's an additional, you know, um, sort of complexity that this model uh, successfully overcomes. So the DeepQ network received only pixels as input from 49 Atari 2600 games using the same architecture and hyperparameters. Uh, it surpassed the performance of all previous algorithms and performed at a level comparable to a professional human tester on these games. And the thing to note, or well, one thing to note, and one thing that's quite remarkable is that the same architecture and hyperparameters were used. And so this is the first artificial agent capable of learning to excel at a diverse set of challenging tasks using the same framework. So it was retrained on the particular tasks at hand, but the structure of this network was preserved throughout uh, all the tasks that it was used for. So it's not like they developed, you know, separate models for the different applications, but rather it's one one model that can be trained for, for either of these 49 games. So that's quite remarkable. Uh, and to dig into some of the details, uh, firstly, you know, the, the high level overview of what is done in reinforcement learning, and that is for the agent to maximize the future discounted cumulative reward. Um, and this is done practically by approximating the optimal action value function. And for anyone familiar with reinforcement learning concepts, this is nothing new. So we have a Q value function or action value function as it's called. It, tells us how good it is to be in state S. So the state is called S and the action that we take is called A. So if we're in state S and take action A and then follow the policy, which tells us how we're uh, acting in, in our uh, sort of state space. If we take the action A, our state S and then follow this policy, uh, it tells us what the future discounted cumulative reward is going to be. Uh, so the optimal Q value function is what we want to find because if we have that, then we can pick the best actions um, and, and then we have an optimal uh, sort of policy to follow. Um, the agent is comprised of deep convolutional neural networks to abstractly learn from raw sensory data. So these convolutional neural networks uh, are a special type of, of neural networks uh, that have been very shown to be very effective on, on image recognition and various image classification, classification tasks and so on. Basically, they're comprised of hierarchical layers of tiled convolutional filters that mimic the effects of receptive fields in the brain. Um, and this has the effect of providing robustness for changes in viewpoint and scale. So these convolutional networks are very good, as I said, at recognizing things in images and they're robust to changes in that image. So if you're slightly moving something or, or scaling something, then that would not um, necessarily cause the network to, to go out of, um, you know, whatever uh, normally or however you want it to behave. Uh, so that's a, a big benefit with these uh, convolutional networks. Uh, so moving on to nonlinear function approximator, which is the next sort of topic associated with this paper that um, that is something new and something uh, quite good. 
So historically, um, reinforcement learning has been unstable or even diverging when nonlinear function approximators are used to represent the, the Q value function. So um, the consequence here is that you can't really apply something like neural network to the Q value function without it being uh, severely affected. And this is for three main reasons. So firstly, correlations are present in the sequence of observations. So um, these correlations could be if you're in a particular part of your state space and you're acting based on your policy, uh, you would expect the rewards to be quite similar coming uh, after each other, so subsequently. Um, so let's say you know, you're acting in some domain uh, because the domain itself will not really change very rapidly as you make some small changes, um, then yeah, your rewards will be quite similar. And this is not good from, from a training perspective. Also, small queue updates may significantly change the policy. So remember that the policy is derived from the queue value function. So if you have your queue value function telling you how good a particular action is from a state, if you maximize that, you basically get a greedy policy. Uh, or not necessarily, or not just greedy in the sense of acting based on the first reward, but uh, greedy with respect to the queue value function. If we have two actions that are very similar in Q-value, so let's say we're in a car and we can turn left or right. Um, if they are very similar, and you might be on the sort of side of always turning left, and then you have some change in, in your parameters, so you flip over to always turning right instead, that's going to have a severe implication on the target policy or on the policy that you're uh, following if you're doing this on policy, so to speak. Um, and this is something that, that also can... To, um, disturb the network and the training phase. Lastly, there's a big correlation between the action values and the target variables. Uh, and this also becomes problematic. Um, and there are a few ways of dealing with these, but historically, or but they're not really suited for this task. And the reason why is that they normally require retraining of the network several times from the beginning. And for these big networks that were applied for, for this model, that is simply not feasible. So it, yeah, it's, something, it's not something you can get around uh, because it would simply take too much time and require too much computational effort. So what was done in this paper instead, and which was proven to be quite effective, is something called experience replay to begin with. And that enables IID observations from the state action reward distribution. So we said in the beginning, the first problem is that correlations are present in the sequence of observations. So we would like some way of training these networks, but not just using sort of the direct feedback that we're getting. The way we do this is we accumulate the agent's experience. So we denote you know, an experience observation ET as the combination of a state action reward and then the subsequent state that you get to. And we store those in a data set D. Then when we update the, the Q values, um, we sample basically observations from this uh, set D in order to update um, the variables with Q learning. And then lastly, the target network is only updated with Q network parameters every C steps. So we basically have a batching feature here where we update our network uh, only on a periodic basis. Now, this might uh, not sound very sort of intuitive or, or the, the only thing this sort of on a surface level would indicate is that it would take longer to train the network and it's not obvious why it would help, but what it helps Again, this is basically to decouple um, the correlation between the action values and the target variables. Um, so the third point that we saw being a problem for these, for these algorithms. Um, and so with this, they were able to basically train the network and uh, get really good performance. 